Excellent stuff. So we'll make a start. So obviously this is the Meet the Future event. Originally it was meant to happen last week on Wednesday the 10th of June. That's when it was initially scheduled in uh, for this year. But obviously due to the COVID this current school closures, that has been unable to happen. So obviously it's one of the really important events that we do throughout obviously time at Rome are. So it's really important we get to meet the tutor, gives you lots of key information regarding obviously the school itself and also regarding transition as well. For those who've just joined us, I could please actually just turn your cameras off just to make sure that the screen, obviously, which I am sharing, it can still be seen by everybody as well. So, I will let Mr. Flynn now, who you can hopefully all see, quickly introduce himself. Right, so as Mr. Barstow said, I'm new to the school, I'll be joining in September, but I've been at the school for the past few months, so like many of you, I'll be new experience. My name's Mr. Flynn, I teach French and German, and also speak uh, Italian if you're interested in that. And as fun fact about myself, I do boxing and cycling. When I lived in France, I was part of a French boxing team and had three fights. So any other questions regarding start September, my email is there, gflynn at royalmarshall.org. And any questions about the start, uh, don't hesitate to email me. I'll now let Mr. Bartle continue the presentation. Really? Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Flynn. So, obviously, Mr. Flynn, there will be the tutor for 7.2 in September. So, obviously, he'll be able to answer any questions through his email address there, but also any other questions. There's a lot of information on the school website as well. So, now, so your form group, where you can see, this will be a form group, uh, which will be in September. I think so far we've got around 12 parents and students on. Obviously, I think there are around, usually between 22 and 25 students will be in a form group. So, I know this is a really, really strange way to see within your form group, but it's the best way we can do, obviously, given the current circumstances. Now, we've done the form groups in liaison with primary schools. So, Ms. Tomlinson, who's our transition coordinator, has done a brilliant job in contacting all primary schools and making sure that they've sent us, for example, out of their class, broken them down into eight or nine groups, saying, right, these three students will be brilliant together in one, two group, these three students in another, etc. Okay, just to try and make that transition as easy as it can possibly be. So, when you first come in September, we should be a familiar face or a couple of familiar faces when you come to the tutor group in September, obviously unless you come from a school which is outside of our usual feeder schools. But again, Ms. Tomlinson has been doing brilliant work contacting everybody to make sure we can make that transition as easy as possible. Now, you'll stay in that form group usually, the initial form groups are 7.2 in which you're all going to be in, until around, it's around Christmas time when we get the first data collection. Because what we have at Romas is what's called targeted tutor groups, where once you have a lot of data on students, for example, attendance, effort, behaviour, punctuality, we will then put, put students into different tutor groups. Obviously, it's impossible if we have a student who has got outstanding effort, outstanding attendance, is getting CFPs, if their, their behaviour is absolutely outstanding, they are a model student, obviously, it's going to be difficult to address the needs of that student while also addressing the needs of, for example, a student who might have some attendance issues, they may have behaviour issues in a certain lesson. It's impossible for any form tutor to address both those, to make sure that both those students are set up for the day in 15 minutes in the morning. So when, it, when we got all these data on students, usually around Christmas time, students have been put into our challenge, inspire or support tutor groups. Okay. Now, so challenge again, the top students, those who are going above and beyond every single day, attendance is outstanding, effort outstanding, punctuality, behaviour, absolutely brilliant as well. You inspire tutor group, maybe, for example, students who have got brilliant attendance, but maybe have some effort issues or maybe have some issues with their behaviour. And you support tutor group with students who, for example, have got Maybe they might have uh, some issues with their attendance, their, their effort might not be great, their behaviour might not be great as well. What's really important to stress is that these two groups, when they go into these targeted tutor groups, usually around Christmas time, they are not set in stone. So obviously when initially students are put in, we understand that their behaviour might change and their attendance might change. So maybe a student initially who starts in support, their attendance might uh, improve drastically, their effort might improve, and they may then go up to inspire and then go up, to, for example, to uh, challenge as well. But also a student in challenge may start brilliantly, but then they may have a few attendance issues, a few behaviour issues and go down, for example, to uh, inspire or support as well. OK, but it's just trying to make sure that during about 15 minutes in the morning, every student can get the bespoke tutor period to make sure that they are set up to make the most of their time at Romash. So initially they've been done. Obviously, you'll be in 7.2 at the start. But when it comes to around Christmas time, usually just after, that's when we'll start this type of tutor period as well. So. The school day, which I'd imagine some of you might have seen uh, already since some information regarding this. 
So you can see the school, school day there. You've got four periods, period one, period two, a break, period three, a second break, and then period four, okay? So all the lessons, period one and period two, are an hour 20 minutes, and period three and period four are an hour 15 minutes. The day starts with a form period from 8.40 till 9, which I'll explain more about in a second. So we're seeing the form period will be with the people who are on this call now in 7.2. In your lessons, you may be with certain people who are in your form group, but also you will be with diff different students as well from different form groups, okay? So you may be with a different group of students in an English lesson than you will be in a science lesson or than you would be in a history lesson, for example, okay? So in your lessons, you'll be able to mix with people you know from your primary school and also different people as well. On your first day when you come in September, you will not be starting your normal lessons on that first day. So Wednesday the 2nd of September will be an induction day where, for example, you'll be showing around the school, you'll be sorting out your email address, sorting out your thumbprint for the cafeteria and all that kind of stuff, making that transition as easy as possible. And the second day on the first day, that will also be an induction day looking more at team building activities as well. On the Friday, we'll be starting looking at starting a couple of lessons just to get students used to going around with the bells, for example, making sure we know when the bell goes at period one to period two, so we can get used to moving around the school as well. Well, obviously that again, and then second week in September, that is when students will start their full lessons, okay? So a full period you can see there is the first 20 minutes of every day, and we're going to talk more about that now. So you form period, a warning bell will first go at 8.40. So obviously we have some students who arrive bang on at 8.40 into school on school sites. Other students may arrive, for example, earlier as well. So may, may arrive, for example, from usually around 8 o'clock on, which is how to see students arriving on school sites. Now, when that warning bell goes, that is your sign that you need to be making your way to your tutor room if you've not done so already. OK, so lots of people, when they first come to school site, they might like to sit in their tutor room, have a chat with their friends before obviously tutor period starts. Others might be want to chat outside, play football, etc. But as soon as that warning bell goes at 8.40, that is your sign that you need to be making your way to your tutor room. So obviously, the last thing you'd want is a late mark in the morning, OK, because the morning register will be taken at 8.45. So when that second bell goes at 8.45, you need to make sure you are in your tutor room because that is when your... Uh, but it's just taking in the morning, and that is when obviously if you like, you will get a late mark. Now, one morning per week, you'll have an assembly in the main hall, where again, you'll be sat with your tutor group. So obviously, four mornings out of five, you'll be in your normal tutor room, the same room every single day in the morning. But one day out of the five, you'll have an assembly with myself, which will obviously then you'll still be sat with the tutor groups. You'll line up outside, we'll go through all this on the first day. But obviously then, you'll be sat with your tutor groups, and rather than being in your form rooms, you'll be in the hall with an assembly by myself. Now, obviously, we understand at the moment there are obviously concerns regarding social distancing. Because on the first day in September, the initial the plan at the moment is for all students to go into assembly first thing so we can make sure we know who their form tutor is again and then follow their form tutor to their form rooms. We understand at the moment that if scientific advice dictates that we are unable to do that, we will come with, come with another plan to make sure we are dealing with government social distancing guidelines at all times. So our plan at the moment is for an assembly on that first day but obviously, if that is not suitable and not feasible due to the scientific guidelines and scientific advice, we will then come up with another plan for that first day. But uh, please be assured, obviously, we'll contact and make sure you're all aware of this plan before we start. Now, the four time activities, normally, apart from being assembly, so you'll be doing quizzes, you'll be doing theme learning, reviews of effort, looking at a row mass way and a row mass place, we're going to come to later on. You'll be looking at your effort and attendance data, looking at any data collections, and also looking at your behaviour as well, seeing who's got loads of CFPs, and who unfortunately might have picked up some CFCs as well. Now, the uniform policy, obviously, a lot of information regarding this is available on the school website, and you might have seen it already through some of the um, informational videos that have been already uh, published on the school website. So our preferred school supplier for uniform is Pinders which I believe, I believe their store reopened on Monday. So I think obviously they are now contactable both via phone, via email, and also obviously in store as well. So our school uniform is either black tailored trousers or for girls a black knee length skirt. Obviously that would be the Wicked, with the Wickless Partnership Trust logo and also an AST tag on either a skirt or a trousers as well. A white shirt with a clip-on school tie and then having a black v and jumper or a black cardigan, which also has the school logo and the Wickley Partnership Trust logo displayed on the sleeve as well. As you can see, students there, they have got the Wickley Partnership Trust logo, which is that logo there, on the cardigan, and the same logo you can see there on the trousers too. Okay, so I have a trouser or a skirt, we'll obviously be a um, Wickley Partnership Trust logo. So all our uniform is available through Pinders. And you can see there the P kit as well, which is also available through Pinders. So you've got either shorts or leggings or tracksuits, bottoms with a logo. T-shirt again with a school logo. For girls, it'd be a hoodie, or for boys, it'd be a three-quarter tip top. 
black socks and trainers as well. Now, I really recommend that for trainers, you bring a separate pair of shoes than what you would wear throughout the school day. The last thing we'd want, for example, if you're going and doing some PE outside, it's a little bit muddy. What we don't want is obviously to run really muddy and ruin your school shoes, which you then have to wear for the rest of the day. You're going to see examples of what would be acceptable school shoes in a second. So, you see there what these what would be deemed as, as per our school uniform policy as acceptable footwear. So you can see we've got some of the classic styles there, some traditional school shoes, but also there are some trainer styles as well. Now, the key thing you'll notice, okay, is that all these shoes are plain black leather and they have no stripes or logos in any different colours. So you see, for example, with the Nike ones here, the reason they're acceptable is despite the fact they're trainers and despite the fact they have logos, all the logos are plain black. Okay, so the shoes are completely plain black. They have no stripes or logos in any different colours. Okay, so all these are what we deem as acceptable footwear. The ones which would not be seen as acceptable are any of the following. So you can see there, iron ass trainers, so despite the fact they're mostly black, due to the fact that they have the white stripes with the gold tags as well, they would not be suitable as part of school uniform. These two options here, they would not be suitable because they are not leather. Those plimsolls are not leather. Vivian Westwood pumps like there, for example, they are not suitable because A, they are not leather, they are plastic. And B, obviously due to the big logo on the front, they would not be suitable. And again, boots like these ones here, they would not be suitable either due to the, obviously the big silver buckles up the side. So there you can see examples of what would be acceptable and obviously you know, unacceptable footwear as per the school, school uniform policy. Now, again, regarding makeup and uh, eyelashes and false nails as well. So eyelashes and false nails are not permitted as per school uniform policy. Again, that's more health and safety, more than anything, really. Extreme haircuts are not allowed. Jewelry must be kept to a minimum. So that's no more than one small earring, sleep or in each ear. And facial piercings, again, are not allowed on school site. That goes for tongue piercings as well. Again, just to make sure health and safety-wise, we're all okay. And gold, silver and bronze award pin matches should be worn as part of school uniform. Now, you might have seen, for example, if you've got siblings or if you've got friends who are already at Romash, or you may have, for example, come to some of the previous events which you've held, you may have seen some of our students who have some loads of badges on their ties, like this one you can see here. Now, you'll get tie badges for either it may be due to uh, outstanding, it may be due to getting a gold, silver or bronze award, maybe due to getting effort rank one, due to getting 100% attendance during a term, and that is the reason for which you might get a tie badge. What we really like students to do is to be proud of their achievements and show off their tie badges on their ties. And it's brilliant to see when students start in year seven, we'll have one or two tie badges first, and then throughout the time at Romash, we'll get more and more and really start filling up their time with all these achievements that they have made throughout their time at Romash. Now, the canteen here, okay, so canteen again. Some of you may be aware of that, is, some of you may not. But obviously, on the first day in September, we'll be going around to make sure you all, show you all know exactly where it is, okay? So your account for purchasing food of the cafeteria will be set up in September. Okay. Now the account is accessed either through a thumbprint, thumbprint, sorry, or a code. And on that first day, you'll be allocated a time in your tutor group to go down to the cafeteria and to sort out both your thumbprint and your code. The reason we have these two versions is that sometimes the best way to do it is using your thumbprint. But sometimes, for example, the screen where you put your thumb to use a thumbprint may be a little bit dirty, so you may have to use the code as well. Now, the reason we use this front print and these codes is to make sure that your account is completely personal to you, okay? So these accounts can either be topped up through school, but have some machines either in the canteen or just next door where you can put coins and put notes in as well, or they can also be topped up through parent pay as well, okay? I believe letters regarding parent pay and how to set it up should be going out before the summer holidays, or at the very least before school starts in September. Now, obviously, in the first week, we understand, or in the first couple of weeks, when I say, we understand that students may find it a little bit daunting going to the cafeteria and being unsure about what food to order, that kind of stuff. So, in the first couple of weeks, year seven students will go to lunch 10 minutes early. Just to make sure they can know where the canteen is, know the kind of stuff they need to do, they get used to using their front prints or their code as well. Just to try and, again, ease that transition to make sure it's as seamless as possible. And so you can see there regarding parent pay, so let us all go out before September with parent pay login details to so use it to chop up your child's account food at break times. And we can see an example there of the machine which you would use. So you can either use, for example, the front print machine there. Sorry, you can see the front print machine on there. Or if that is not working for any reason, you can then put your code in there as well. Okay, so you can top up student youth coins or with notes, and then it will show you what the amount of money which you have on your account as well there. But again, it's so top either through parent pay or through the... Uh, monetary machine, machines you can see on the school side there. Now, these are a couple of examples of a menu, obviously the food is offered in school. This is not an exhaustive list, okay? So you've got some examples here where you may have, these are what's the food which is usually served on certain days in the school cafeteria, 
okay so it might be this might be on a monday there will be certain food obviously we will change most days and there are also different sites in school as well so there are school vending machines where students may want to get drinks from as well or there are also some different uh, stalls as well which are closer down to the, towards the p department where we have stores for example where students can purchase pasta pots that kind of stuff as well okay it's not an exhaustive list and we really like to make sure that dietary wise we are catering for everybody who comes to Roma community school now being equipped to learn it you can see the minimum equipment which is expected of all people okay uh, all students when they first come to romance one of the romance way statements we're going to see later on is we are equipped to learn and if you're coming to school showing that you've got your pen pencil ruler if you've got your peak if necessary that kind of stuff that will show that you are equipped to learn and you're in the right mindset to make the most of your learning at romance so the minimum for every day is two pens two pencils a ruler a sharpener and a rubber as well okay so during form period you'll be expected to present your equipment to your form tutor every morning so it may be as you're going through doing a register it may be a simply a case of you hold up your pencil case or you hold up your equipment to show to your form tutor that you've got all that equipment ready as well and but again if you have for example pee on a certain day you obviously need to bring your pee kit if you have to bring for example your exercise but you're taking home it's really important recommend you pack your bag the night before to make sure you're all set for that for, for the next day and you're all not rushing around in the morning as well now for design technology okay the key stage three design technology team asked for a voluntary contribution towards resources which supports the department in being able to provide the equipment for students every year okay so obviously during this first year they'll be doing for example making certain products with wood or fabric or other components and they'll also okay using ingredients as well so this voluntary contribution would go towards the ingredients students would use and also the wood fabric any other components they would need as well so this will appear on the parent pay account which is ready for september it's normally around 10 pounds for a school year but it's just to make sure it's, it's a voluntary contribution to make sure that while students are in school obviously doing design technology they don't have to bring ingredients from home they don't have to bring wood fabric all that kind of stuff as well it's obviously this voluntary contribution then goes towards the budget which the design technology team use obviously for the lessons as well an apron is also to be worn in design technology as part of health and safety as well these can have it provided by school or also students can bring their own if they'd like to do so as well now some learning is one of our key tools we use in school which is one of the key tools we use to set students homework okay so all students when they first come on that first day in september will have an account set up on some learning and this is a variety of activities for different subjects for maybe for, uh, for french for maths for science they all have different subjects on there you can access the resources both in school and at home and the vast majority of this homework will be set on some learning too so the vast majority of homework rather be set on some learning or potentially also through google classroom that is one of the tools where i use a lot at the moment during the school closure because when you start in september every student will be placed in their classes will be uploaded onto google classroom but again we'll explain more about this in september on the first day you'll be shown how to set up your email how to access some learning how to access google classroom all that kind of stuff as well so don't panic we'll cover all this in september now the school mobile phone policy okay there are only three circumstances in which you are allowed to use your mobile phones in school the first one is in the lesson if your two teachers have said that you are allowed to use your phone as a learning tool so it may be your teachers say right for the next five minutes i want to use your phones to research uh, a certain topic in history or it may be in geography for example if i say right you've got five minutes do the quizlet which i've just emailed out to you to practice these keywords okay maybe two examples but again it's really important this is dictated by the classroom teacher the, when the classroom teacher explicitly says you can use your mobile phone that is when you would do so it can be used at break times but only in form rooms but also in classrooms as well okay so any form or classroom that students would go into that is where they'll be able to use them not on corridor which i'll explain in a second and also for recording homework as well so students might for example they may use their phone as a planner okay so they may want to record some of their homework on their phone so they might say right i've got a homework for um, art for example which is due on thursday they may use their phone to log that homework on there so they are the only three scenarios in which students should be allowed to use their phones outside of this obviously if, if a student's phone is visible on corridors for example they're walking down a corridor texting or ringing using their phone or it's being used during lesson time where the teacher is not given permission for it to be used students phone will be confiscated until the end of a school day your name will be logged and you'll be in detention for that evening okay now what happens usually is obviously if it's, if it's the first time with a student's phone has been confiscated but at the end of a school day they would go up sit their attention and then collect their phone 
if this happens two or three times, we'd then be getting to a stage where either myself as a head of year or the SPM for the year group will then have to ring home and say, I'm really sorry, but uh, your son or daughter or your child has had their phone confiscated three times. It's now gotten to the stage where you as a parent or carer will have to come in to collect your child's phone. Obviously, that is something we want to avoid at all costs. Obviously, that is not ideal when parents and carers are working, but it's just to make sure that students really understand that phones are to be used as learning tools and not when students are going round, for example, Snapchatting on school corridors, texting their friends, that kind of stuff. A behaviour policy you can see there. So we operate the same data detention system to make sure that any instances of unacceptable behaviour are dealt with promptly. Okay, so there are three types of detentions that you may be put into. A pastoral detention is a detention you may go into, which is either you'll be put in detention either by your head of the year, your SPM, or your form tutor. So you may go into pastoral detention if you've been late for that day, if you've had some behaviour issues at break time, for example, if you have had, for example, uh, you've not come to school with equipment for a number of days, for example. These were reasons why you may be placed into pastoral detention. Faculty detention is more linked to your classes. So, for example, if you have been misbehaving in a certain subject, if you have not embodied the Romash way uh, during a P lesson, for example, you can be placed in faculty detention there. And a sanctioned detention, you're only placed in either if you are sent to sanctions, you'll be sent to sanctions if your behaviour has been so unacceptable during a lesson that your presence in that lesson is hindering the learning of other people. Now, I'll be quite honest, nobody should ever get to the point where they are sent to sanction. Because obviously, teachers will remind us, you've had a first warning, second warning will be going outside, and a third warning will be sanctioned. So no student should ever get to the stage where they have to be removed from a class to ensure that other students in that class can continue with their learning. But if that does happen, a sanctioned attention can see it's the longest one it happens there from 10 past 3 to 4 o'clock. The only other uh, occasion where students may go into a sanctioned detention will be due to extreme uh, incident, behavioural incident that may have happened during the day. Now, the main role of these detention rooms is not simply a case of a student sat in detention from uh, 10 past 3 to half past, sat around in silence doing nothing. What we'd like to make sure we do is that the member of staff who has placed student in detention, so if the student is late, then myself as a head of year or the SPM will go and have a conversation with the student regarding why they were late on that day. If there's been an issue, for example, in a PE lesson, your child's PE teacher will come and have a conversation with them regarding their behaviour in that lesson and try and think of a way forward for the next lesson. And again, with the sanctioned detention. So the student is sent to sanctions, the te member of staff or the teacher who sent your, uh, sent your child to sanctions will then come and have a conversation regarding their behaviour to make sure that for the next lesson, their behaviour obviously can change and think of a positive way forward. If, for example, there's ever an occasion where your child is unable to do detention on a certain day because maybe they have a dentist appointment on that day, for example, it's really important that you contact the school to let us know that your child is not able to do detention on that day so obviously then we can rearrange it. Whenever your child's placed in detention, we will send out a text normally through my head to inform you that your son, your son, daughter or child has been placed in detention uh, tonight until half past three. And from then obviously you can contact the school no, I'm really sorry, but tonight they are able to do it. They can do it tomorrow instead, for example. But obviously, we ask as a school that you support our behaviour policy at all times because we want to make sure that students uh, are making the most of their learning at Romas and any behavioural issues can be nipped in the bud really early to make sure we can go on and make the most of the time at school. Now, obviously, apart from negative behaviour, what we want to do more is talk about positive behaviour. You can see there the kind of rewards, the kind of ways that we as a school at Romash reward students for their behaviour. Now, we always want to make sure that we don't only reward those students who are always getting it right, but we also reward those students who are showing improvement as well. Okay, and that this may be really small improvements uh, from your perspective, but from my perspective, we want to make sure that no matter how small those improvements may be, we want to show obviously that we are rewarding uh, these students as a school. So one of the main ways we'll trap this is through course of praise. Okay, so you'll give it a course of praise if you are embodying a real match way in every aspect. So you might be helping somebody else, it may be you represented the school football team or you've, you've been to an after school club. It may be that you're going above and beyond in your lesson. Whenever you're showing outstanding attributes and attitude and also showing a real match way in every single aspect, you'll be given a course for praise. Now, again, praise points are linked to that. So your course for praise will link to your praise points, but they are also linked, for example, to your effort as well. So throughout the year, you'll be given uh, at certain times, there'll be an effort ranking. So you can see the effort ranking explanation there. So effort rankings are given when your uh, teachers in certain subjects, in every single subject, should I say, will say, right, your effort has either been excellent, uh, coasting, requires improvement, or poor. Now, obviously, if, if you get an all excellent uh, effort, which in my opinion, every student should be getting excellent effort in every single lesson, then you will be effort rank one, so you receive a photo, like you can see this one here, so this is my year 11 group from last year. 
and you receive a photo you receive a certificate and also a little pin badge you can put on your tie as well we also have golden ties for top boys and top girls so these are given at the uh, ward assemblies at the end of the year so many of you have award assemblies where we celebrate all the achievements of students both in school and out of school so each subject will nominate a student or a couple of students who have gone above and beyond in that year uh, in a certain subject there will be awards for attendance there will be awards for uh, from the head of year for example as well or from the sbm lots of different awards and golden ties are given to the top boy and top girl so it's a really really good award that all students should strive towards so again, you have an the attendance award as well, which will be uh, given obviously with relation with the uh, attendance department, and they'll give you some pin matches for your tie. Golden tickets as well for attendance, which is a reward. Curriculum awards for effort and attainment, which are linked to the award assembly as well. Gold, silver, and bronze award, which are given uh, by taking into account your effort, attendance, and punctuality, and also your leadership runs too. So every single half term, each tutor will nominate one person. Uh, from their form group who they feel is going to go and beyond during that half term and they'll be rewarded with a leadership lunch now on that day the school canteen will be closed the other food outlets will be open around school but the school canteen will be closed for one break because these students will receive a free lunch and then be able to obviously uh, eat with their friends on that day and obviously celebrate the fact that they have been nominated by their tutor as the outstanding student in that form group for that half term so as i said we really like to make sure we're at Roma, we are constantly rewarding most students who are getting it right all the time now, the role match making see there, so you may have seen this already if you've got, for example, siblings already, and we mentioned this uh, previously at some of our uh, previous um, transition events. So the role match way is, is 12 statements, which we feel every single student should embody every single day, not only at role match, but also in life as well. Think some of them, for example, we dream big, we are equipped to learn, we take this game right to a challenge. Okay, so by embodying these role match ways, I'm going to show you how we do that in a second, these would then and lead to you achieving CFPs and obviously going above and beyond as well. Now, the Romash Way is intrinsically linked to the Romash Pledge. So, the Romash Way statements are divided into three groups which then make up the Romash Pledge. So, the three groups are Add Citizenship, British Values, and Life Skills. As you can see there from their three groups, each uh, Romash Pledge statement has four of the Romash Way statements. For active citizenship, you can see there we have, we take pride in our school community, we take risk and rise to a challenge, we believe in ourselves and we dream big. And a Romash pledge, which you may have seen already from some of the previous presentation events and also information on the school website, is a hierarchy of tasks and challenges that you can work through and achieve bronze, silver and gold for each aspect. Because one of the things you want to make sure at Romash is that students don't only leave with GCSEs, but also are leaving as well as able students, okay, and able young people. And the way we want to do it is by uh, focusing on the Romas Pledge. So you can see there the Romas Pledge itself. So it's split, active citizenship, life skill, British values, four Romas Way statements for each one, and also bronze, silver, and gold. Okay, so you might have seen some of these already. So you can see, for example, for bronze, you may have, for example, we believe in ourselves, so write down a list of your strengths and areas for development and present it to your form, your tutor group, okay? So that would be the way you would achieve your bronze pledge for uh, we believe in ourselves. Now, obviously, it goes without saying that you must achieve a bronze pledge before you move on to a silver and before you move on to a gold as well. Now, this Romance pledge is a two-way commitment between staff and students. It's a commitment from students to staff by saying, right, I'm going to embody the Romash way in every single way by completing as many pledges as possible. But it's also equipment commitment from other staff to the students by making sure, for example, on a, we take pride in our community, on the silver pledge, it states participate in an enterprise initiative such as the tenor challenge. Now, students may not be sure what the tenor challenge is. And that'll be where myself as a head of year or your uh, child tutor, Mr. Flynn, or uh, the SPM for the year group as well, will then inform students in the tenor challenges of this, what you need to do, and explain exactly what they need to do going that way. Okay, but it's a commitment two ways between staff and students. We want to make sure that students achieve as many pledges as they can during their time at Romance, because students who are achieving lots of pledges will get rewarded as well. Now, the Romance Pledge Challenge for the moment, okay, obviously we would normally be starting our rollover period next week, obviously which is not able to take place, but we still want to try and launch the pledge initiative, okay, for our new item and students. So the pledge we want you to focus on at the moment, for this week, is learn a new skill. Now that new skill could be anything. It may be you learn how to say hello in, a different, uh, in five different languages. It may be that you learn how to cook a different meal. It may be that you learn how to juggle, for example, okay, this new skill can be entirely up to you. Okay, but obviously we want as many students as possible to try and achieve this pledge before they join Romash in September. 
So what you need to do, you need to have a prior evidence of you doing this skill, either through a photo, through a video of you doing it, through a diary, through a demonstration, that kind of stuff, okay, which you will then share with your form tutor in September. There will be other pledge challenges coming in the next couple of weeks, and it'd be brilliant if before you come in September, you can say, right, I've already achieved three or four pledges. So you've got the ball rolling already, so that you can try and achieve as many as possible. Now, the Chromebook scheme, I know I've had a couple of parents contacting me regarding the Chromebook scheme for this year. So the information you can see is there. Okay, the, pra the Chromebook, you can see the example of the Chromebook should be used there. This, this is obviously, this is not compulsory. This is obviously voluntary. If, if parents would like to pay the Chromebook for their child, it's obviously this link. So we're quite useful. Students can use them in school. They can use also at home as well. If you link to Google Classroom, the battery life is brilliant. They're really portable as well. So the price you can see there, the pricing details for 12, 24, or 36 months. Are also a cash option as well the portal on the school website to water a chromebook is open until the 10th of august okay so there's a link on the school website romash.org forward slash chromebooks where you can access the portal get a lot of information regarding the chromebooks and how to order as well and if you've got any questions regarding the chromebooks please email chromebooks at romash.org and they'll be answering they'll to answer any queries you've got as well but if you forget to email that uh, email address just email myself jbartle at romash.org and I'll be able to more, more, than happy, be, more than happily be able to answer any questions you have regarding Chromebooks. Now, another resource on our school website at the moment, which you may have seen, is our Ask a Student question. Now, obviously, at the moment, lots of information we have given has been either from myself as a head of year or from Miss Shaw, who's our deputy head as well. Lots of information has come from members of staff in school. Now, what we want as well, are we yes have students who said they'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have before you come up to Roma. So rather than me giving you my opinion on certain things, students and children who've already gone through the transition, uh, for example, last year, will be able to give you a better opinion on life at Romash as well. So you might want to ask about after school clubs, you might want to ask about certain lessons, certain teachers, you might want to ask about how we first adapted by joining uh, in um September, for example, obviously rollover last year, you might want to ask what were we students worried about when they first came up? So it's just trying to make sure that rather than me answering these questions, student members of the school, obviously students of the school can answer these questions for you, try and alleviate any worries you may have to make that transition as best as best it can possibly be. So this form is available on the school website. So if there's a form on our website, you can get questions or you can email them to the contacts on the next page. And obviously, we have lots of follow-up videos coming in the next couple of weeks where we'll share the answers from our students to these questions which you may have posed. Now, if you have, obviously, there's been a lot of information tonight, obviously, a lot of information in the last couple of weeks as well. So if you have any questions whatsoever regarding either information that's been given tonight or information which you feel, obviously, not been given tonight, but you'd like to know a bit more about it, Please feel free to either, I would first of all recommend looking on the school website. There was a transition 2020 uh, section of the school website, which contains lots of information. That is, whenever we do a new video, whenever there is a new Google form or anything along those lines, that is where it will be uploaded. So that is the main place where I would recommend you all look, first of all, for any answers regarding transition. Obviously, if there's something on there which you are still uh, unsure about, contact myself as a head of year. So that'll be jbartle at romash.org. Or you can also contact Miss Tomlinson, who's our transition coordinator, who's done an absolutely brilliant job liaising with primary school to make the transition as best as it can possibly be. So there are two email addresses are there. They're also available on the school website. So any, any information that you would like, okay, either regarding transition or life at Romash or any worries you've got whatsoever, please feel free to get in touch and we're more than happy to help. Now, again, I know it's been a lot of information tonight, okay, so I hope it has been useful for you uh, as parents and obviously children as well. I will now see if we've got any questions that anyone has posed. That the will new parent pay accounts need to be set up or will the ones currently used be transferred? Now, I would imagine it would, I'm no expert, I think I would have to ask the finance department, but I would imagine that they will be transferred over. I cannot understand why they would start a new parent pay account if there's one already set up and in place. However, obviously, I will contact it, Ms. Burke, so I will contact our finance department and find out if the uh, new parent pay accounts need to be set up or if the ones which you currently use for example at primary school can just be transferred over i believe that is the only question so if anyone else has any other questions obviously you may have some that may come up for example you may think of one in a couple of hours time or a couple of days time if you've got any other questions please feel free to email myself or miss Tomlinson or mr flynn's giving an email as well you'll be able to answer some questions as well obviously not as many potential because he's new to the school but you'll be more than happy to help too but I hope you found tonight useful. And I've said any more questions, feel free to ask. Uh, will they need 
another question will they need the computers at school no so the chromebooks are not compulsory obviously when students take part in an it lesson they will obviously have some um uh, computers are in the classroom they're set up for them chromebooks are optional to be purchased by students if they would like a chromebook but they are not compulsory so it's just sometimes you may have a student who would rather for example type on their chromebook for a lesson or they'd rather use it for their homework as well but they are not compulsory it's just a scheme we offer in school to try and help students that way i'll give it first i can see if any more questions come through We appear to be all right. So I said, if there are any other questions, feel free to email myself. I'll be more than happy to help. I hope you found tonight useful, and I look forward to seeing you all. Obviously, when you first come up in September, and keep an eye on the transition twenty twenty section of the school website for more information in the coming weeks. Cheers, guys! Nice to see you all. See you later. <laughs>